We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. May the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised. In his great mercy, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, he gave us new birth into a living hope, the hope of an inheritance reserved in heaven, which nothing can destroy or spoil or wither. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, says the Lord. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. We will not have you ignorant, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, you love us with an everlasting love and can turn the shadow of death into the light of a new dawn. Help us now to wait upon you with reverent and submissive hearts. In the silence of this hour, speak to us of eternal things, that with patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and hold fast the blessed hope of eternal life which you have given us in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please sit. We shall now have tributes. My brother Charles. Good evening, church. Lucille Melrose White, better known as Ma'am, was born on the 18th of July, 1932, to the late Hillary and Viola Hoyt at Sherborne in St. John. She was the first of three children, 
Her siblings were Elaine and Velder. Elaine is now deceased, and Velder resides in the United Kingdom. She was educated at Mount Tabor Girls School under Miss Ida Pilgrim, and in her secondary years, under the late Reverend A.C.H. Pilgrim. It was there that she understood the importance of Christianity and education. This prepared her for the role of wife and mother in her adult years. It was during this early part of her life that she was indoctrinated with all aspects of being a Christian and her duty as a church worker. She indicated that she also, during this period, joined what was then called the guilds, and this prepared her in many ways. As the eldest of the children, she was tasked with taking care of the home. As her mother, who was a laborer at Handy Plantation, had to travel from Sherburn to get there. And those of us who know it would understand that that was quite a distance to walk from Sherburn. In those days, parents were as strict as can be, and everything had to be perfect and spotless, or else there were severe consequences. After her secondary education, she met the late Charles Francis White. Of course, as was the custom of the day, the young and persistent Charles had to write to her parents in order to court her. I do not know what he wrote, but it must have been very convincing as he succeeded at the first try. Obviously, his intentions were honorable, and he proved it to the very end. The union produced seven children. Six of us are here today, with the eldest Pam being called home to her eternal rest. We can all attest to how Ma'am raised the family and maintained discipline. Some of our cousins can also attest to that fact as to how she raised us in the fear of, law, of the Lord and, of course, her brand of discipline. Daddy set ma'am on the highest of heights, and we all had to recognize that position and be always obedient to her. I always wondered about why we had to refer to her as ma'am which seemed a little formal, as opposed to saying mom or mommy. I got the answer in my early adult years, when we had a difference of opinion on a matter. And it was my intention, albeit misguided, to avoid going to her. I went to daddy, and he quickly dispatched me to speak to mom first. I sheepishly obeyed, only to be met by a steely gaze which said more than a thousand words. It is then I realized mom meant more than mom or mommy. She was daddy's chosen, and she was given a free hand of authority to rule, and even he respected that. I dutifully fell back in line, never to err again. <laughs> education was her love, and she believed that a good education would open doors for us, even though you will consider us not to be high up the ladder socially. When I visited her in recent times, she would always say, Steve, you know that I had to beat you to go to school. I would wash you in licks. I would cheekily wonder if she had me mixed up with someone else. But it was clear a mother knew her son. I would recall how I ran, from home, from, ran home from school and ran, ran into her arms. It wasn't a pleasant experience. <laughs> I would, she made sure that all the boys and girls had a good education. She performed the role of teacher, dressmaker, cook, baker, and so much more. She cared immensely for the family as she rose from her bed as early at 3 a.m. some days. In the evening of her years, you could tell the time on mornings as her windows were open when you were going to catch the 5 o'clock bus to go to work. Ma'am's radiogram would also be on and her cooking would be started and the odors would be wafting through the windows. 
She loved Christ as the Answer and other radio programs. The latest was the call-in programs. The issues would often intrigue her, and she never failed to listen. Even coming to her last days, Carol would turn on the radio for her to listen. She leaned more and more on him as he was her aide. She often remarked about his sweet food. Yeah, he is a good chef. She also had a taste for lively gospel music, as many of you would know. She loved Joseph Niles, Margaret and Marshall, and the Chuck Wagon Gang. She would often play these LPs and sing along. At times, she would dance as the spirit moved her. Mam loved the Lord, and she would constantly sing as she went about her chores, especially in those early years. Those days, she had to wash so many clothes by hand, and it was a no easy task. She took to it and made sure that we were always tidy. I do remember her teaching us the word and singing hymns and sankeys at night before we go to sleep. My younger siblings would not remember this, but she took them all to God in prayer. We went to church as a family, and there was no resistance from any of us. I recall in my early years, the rules for church were rigid, and there was a price for non-compliance. <laughs> at that time, there, were, there was morning church, Sunday school, and evening service. Yes. We had to attend each one every Sunday. She, she kept us close to God and helped us to appreciate his love for us. To me, she was one of the great economists. She managed a household of nine with very limited funds, and we got what was needed for our survival. She knew how to stretch a dollar, and Daddy dutifully gave her that task which she performed with alacrity. She brought us all to maturity with a smile, and she would often remind, reminisce about those great times. She knew God would provide, and she gave thanks continually as she continued to read her Bible and textbook daily. They were placed on her dining room table in a particular spot for easy access. She remained faithful to her God even to the end. One of the remarkable things that I witnessed in the last months was that her pains that she suffered in, those, in her legs due to arthritis seemed to have vanished somewhat, and we were able to move her around easily. She took life in stride and was very cheerful as she chatted with us, constantly inquiring about everyone. At times, she would remark with a smile, I hear waiting. She made peace with her God, and she encouraged us to also make peace with him. To her, I say, goodbye, ma'am. Rest in peace until we meet again.
beautiful. Now let us see if we can match that standard as we sing the hymn 516. We have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently prayed. But you cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid. Let's stand and sing.
please sit for the ministry of the word. First reading comes from Psalm 23, be read by Kieran. And the second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, reading verses 13 to 18. And that will be read for us by Brianna. Good evening. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them that also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, and that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord sh shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with, 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 them. with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, come for one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. We shall now sing to him. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms, what a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arms. And I just see Sister White, leaning, leaning, right in that point there. So let's stand and sing, and during the singing of this hymn, a special offer will be received.
we give thanks for all your blessings that you have showed on our lives up to this very moment. We gather today, dear Lord, to give thanks for the life of Sister White, a mother, a friend. We gather here because, Lord, she showed love and her offspring have shown love and we are thankful to have shared part of this journey with her, or rather she have shared part of this journey with us. And we present these gifts this evening, dear Lord, for your blessing. And even as we present them, we ask you to bless us and make our lives a blessing. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please sit as the choir sings. The next and after the choir, Reverend Stacy will bring the message.
Thank you, choir. One of Sister White's favorite hymns. This afternoon we gathered to give thanks to God for the life of Sister White. I have been around for a little while and the only image in my mind is the last police band concert that was held here at Mount Tabor. Sister White came through the door with a walker. She stood up when the congregation stood up to sing, holding on to the walker. And when the police band struck up a Joseph Niles rendition of one of the hymns, Walker gone out of the door, Sister White in the aisle up and down without the walker, dancing. And if that wasn't an impressive sight, it was when the conductor decided to hold her hand as a partner dancing up and down the aisle. That's the only image I can have of Sister White. I then saw it recently on Facebook because somebody who came to the concert, who paid at the concert, took a picture of it and said, this is what music would do to you without Walker, without you holding on to crutches or Walker. Sister White was a wonderful soul and when uh, the hymn that we are going to sing after the message is sung and she wanted a verse another verse she alone will strike up the verse in uh, the hymn and sang whether you want to join in or not, she's going to sing it. And uh, we have no choice but to sing another verse of the hymn with her. A wonderful soul. On behalf of the congregation here at Mount Tabor, on my own behalf, I want to express to you members of the White family, our sincerest condolences. Um, her sense of humor rubbed off on Kali, so much so that Kali come to me one day telling me about a measurement. And he said, Rev, this man measured this thing this way with his two fingers. By the time as he got over there, the measurement got like this. And I go like, Carly, you make up that? He said, no, this is for real. It's because it is for real. I'm going to share with us the comfort concerning those who fall asleep. Let us pray. Speak to us, gracious God. Show us of our own death. Help us to draw close to you, knowing that we are comforted because that's what you said in your words. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Speak to us, O oh God, 
in the name of Jesus, the Christ. Amen. Comfort is needed when death invades our presence and takes from us our loved ones, the one who is near and dear to us. Comfort is needed as we think of those who have departed. Comfort is needed for because comfort is needed because of our loss. Sister White sits in the third pew on my left, on your right. It was vacant just for a little while. Because COVID or no COVID, she come into church with her mask on. She was in that third pew. And I reckon that when the government directory indicated that there were 70, only 77 persons can come into the sanctuary. Sister White made sure that she was one of those 77. And that spoke much of the commitment, the commitment to Jesus Christ and the fellowship and comfort that she enjoys, not online, not on the television or on tablet or any other device. She wanted in person. So comfort is needed for us, for you, members of the family, for us as a member of this, members of this congregation, for us. And in times like these, we can rejoice in the comfort that is available to us through faith in Jesus Christ. Paul emphasizes this point to the Corinthian church and to us as we gather to say thank you Lord for a life well lived. He said that comfort comes from God for those who suffer and hear Paul's word directly. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So God does not want us to be overly concerned about those who die in the Lord. God does not want us to be overly concerned about Sister White. Scripture informs us 
that all doubts and fears are gone because the great shepherd who left the ninety and nine and went after the one have given us the hope the hope we can have in Jesus Christ. While recognizing that it was normal and proper for us to know sorrow, Paul declared that the sorrow of a believer, the sorrow of a Christian, should be different from the sorrow of others who have no hope. Why? The dead in Christ are with the Lord. And so he emphasizes this and he says it. And he sought to encourage us. He says, if our earthly house of uh, this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in uh, the heavens. So, while we remain in this physical body, in a very real sense, we are absent from the Lord. We are told that death, as experienced by our dear sister, moves us out of this physical body into the presence of God. To my mind, that is a good thing. Sister White would say, Amen. It is a good thing. You see, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead was the first fruit of the final resurrection, as Brianna read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Victory over death and the grave is promised to those who know Jesus Christ. The psalmist comforts us in Sister White's favorite psalm, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. She would recite this psalm as a she knew it best. Because the Lord was her shepherd. And so we chose it here today to remind us that we too can make Jesus Christ that great shepherd, our shepherd, so that we would not have to be separated from him again. You see, in verse 17 of the passage that was read, we shall be ever with the Lord. There are many causes for sorrows and grief in this life. There are many causes for us to grieve in this land. Perhaps among these is separation. 
from those we love. This is true when parents are separated from children, no matter how old we are. Charles, she reminded you that she washed you with some licks. But in spite of that, she was still man for you. This is true too when we are separated from our friends and loved ones. One of the wonderful things about heaven is that there will be no more separation from God as recorded in scripture for those things will pass away. And John described the conditions that will prevail. He says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. As we are encouraged today by the life of Lucille Melrose White, we can find comfort in the many promises, the precious promises that are given. One, I will be with you to the end. Two, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Three, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me because I go to prepare a place for you. The comfort that we receive and can receive is more than the result of recalling memories of the past. The challenge that we receive today is to face the future with courage and faith and good cheer in the assurance that death has achieved no final victory and that the grave must one day surrender its victim. Let us be still and know that God is real. He is concerned with our heartaches and our heartbreaks. He has sent his son who tasted death for us. He raised his son back to life. That gives us the hope that assures us that one day we too will rise again and would meet there in glory. In the midst of our sorrow today, let us rejoice in the grace and goodness of God. And take courage for the living of the days. The hymn I'm going to invite you to sing as the another of her favorite. And I don't know why we sing it at funerals. I wish we sing it all the time to remind us and to help us to live a life so that we can say without a shadow of doubt, it is well.
with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of a, the, this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Help me to sing one more time for Sister White. Amen.
as we enter into moments of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. By your human birth, by your obedience and faithfulness, by your prayers and tears, by your agony and passion, by your dying words, by your reconciling death, by your rest in the grave, by your triumphant resurrection, and by your abiding presence. Let us together pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Most holy and merciful God, the refuge and strength of those who put their trust in you, we thank you for the multitude no one can number, whom you have received into your eternal joy. We praise you that you have forgiven them all their sins and that they dwell with you beyond evil and sorrow forever. We thank you also for all to whom amid the trials of this mortal life, you give the faith that overcomes the world, who have peace in you and rejoice in the hope of your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, before whose face the generations rise and pass away. We bless and praise your name for all who have departed this life in faith, and especially for our sister Lucille Wank, for all your loving kindness to her throughout her earthly life, we give you thanks. We thank you that for her, all sickness and sorrow are ended, and that death itself is past. And Almighty God, may we, Inspired by the example of your saints, run with patience the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, so that when this mortal life is ended, we may be gathered with those whom we have loved in the kingdom of your glory, where there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, our Father, by whom we are led through the changes of time to the rest and blessedness of eternity, be near us to comfort and uphold. Make us to know that your people are precious in your sight 
and that they live evermore with you. As we thank you for Sister White, whose life we shared, may we trust you at this time of parting. O oh God, give us of your strength that we may take up our lives more bravely and seek to be more faithful in duty and more loving and helpful to others, following those who are no longer with us here on earth. And may we, in our turn, find in your great mercy the perfect and unending rest of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as we have the commendation of Sister White. Let us commend Lucille Melrose White to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your power you gave us life, and in your love you have given us a new life in Jesus Christ. We entrust Sister Lucille Melrose White to your merciful keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again that we might enjoy eternal life. And may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep and guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you, remain with you, and abide with you, with those whom you love, and with those who make it difficult for you to love, now and forevermore. Amen. We sing this hymn of faith used by many Moravians as part of our Easter litany testimony. Soon shall the trumpet sound, and we shall rise. We sing his love who once was slain, who soon or death revived again, that all his saints through him might have eternal conquests or the grave. We sing all the verses, and then we will recess. Illustrious day when death 
trumpet sound soon shall the trumpet sound soon shall the trumpet sound and we shall rise shall rise shall rise shall rise to
Amen. Amen. That is the hope that we all have in Jesus Christ. We now recess to the burial ground for the internment of the body. We 
agree, amen.